in San Francisco today, uh, day seven of owning this lovely blue Tesla Model Y. Um, just had coffee with a friend in North Beach, Little Italy, and uh, driving down the Embarcadero, <laughs> Embarcadero, about to get on the 280 uh, to head down to Daly City to swing by Home Depot. I'm kind of hoping, and this camera is supposed to be locked onto my face, and it's <laughs> it's like all over the place, camera. Let's bring it back down. Come on. Um, I'm going to go to Home Depot. I hope they have an automotive department. I mean, I also want to go for a joyride, but I need to pick up like a chamois or um, microfiber cloth and um, some non-detergent soaps, I guess, to clean the seats and also um, the exterior. I don't know. There's like waterless soap these days. I tell you, again, I haven't had a car for 27 years, and so uh, I am learning some new things about car care that I haven't needed to know for a long time. Yeah, this camera's like all over the place. <laughs> bear with me, bear with me. Um, so that's what I'm doing. Today's topic, autopilot. Why does autopilot exist? Is it something that even should exist? We're going to discuss. So I'm driving down the road right now. If I flip the camera around, you can see that I'm going down the 280-101 split, uh, and I'm going to put the car in autopilot and have it take control. So it's a double tap down on the drive shifter stock on the right side of the steering wheel. Oops. It's like I grabbed the wheel and I tried to engage. Now, it's on autopilot. I've got cars merging in from the right. I'll have to see if I can get the um, car video. Um, from the hard drive that I have installed. I, I don't know how to use that yet. So you can see some forward or side camera video action, but just had some cars merge in from the right. So this car is just gonna keep in its lane and keep the speed that I have um, set at the speed limit, 65. There is a split coming up. Presumably I'll have to take control and it will disengage the autopilot. So I've used autopilot several times this week. Um, I feel like I'm pretty familiar with it. it. I mean, it's easy to engage. You just turn it on, double tap down. Uh, it goes on. Uh, it does um, adaptive cruise control with the cars in front of you, super convenient. And then it also lane keeps, which is something most cars don't do. Um, it works. Uh, it took me a couple days to kind of get used to trusting it. Um, let's see. I'm going to kind of force it. Yeah, I just forced it on the 280 and it disengaged because it was going to go left down the 101. No big deal. I'm going to re-engage. Right? There's a concrete divider on my left and uh, a lane open on my right with some cars merging. Road's kind of going like this. So it works. Like I'm actually pretty impressed with how autopilot works. Now, it's not the full self-driving business. It's not changing lanes or doing any of that. But I've got cars. I've got a big cement truck on my right merging in and then other lanes coming in on the left and it's just lane keeping and everything works now again i've used it several times and i've been asking myself the question like i can understand full self-driving i i get that business case i get the social case i get the technological case for full self-driving i mean door-to-door -door, car drives itself you don't even need a steering wheel and that's the future, I guess. Like, people don't even need to learn how to drive, I suppose. I love driving. I don't look forward to that particular future. But there are times when I wouldn't want to drive for whatever reason, right? Um, so I get that. This partial autopilot business, the, the power case, or, or whatever they call it, killer scenario, or whatever that thing's called, that I can understand people would want to use that is if you're stuck in commuter traffic and you don't want to run into the person in front of you because it's stop and go and the car's kind of slowly going down the highway and you kind of want to be distracted with work emails or text messages or whatever california law police whatever i'm not admitting to doing this but let's be honest people are already driving and texting 
without autopilot. So the stuff's already happening. People drive drunk. People do not pay attention. They put on their makeup. They are chatting with their friends. They're on phone calls, whatever. So I'm not going to pretend like this stuff doesn't happen. It absolutely does. And the vast majority of us are all super guilty, including the lawmakers who are creating these laws, which are good laws. But, you know, people are people. We also speed. We do all sorts of bad things. So autopilot, I, I get that scenario, but when you're at a higher speed like right now, the car is on autopilot. I'm talking with one hand and I have one hand on my left hand on the wheel. And apparently one hand autopilot driving is sufficient because you need at least one hand in the 10 and two position I've observed for autopilot to view you as like being present. Five and seven down below apparently doesn't work. That's just my observation, it could be wrong. So the car is driving itself and I have to pay attention. So it's like, I'm driving too. I think the camera's a little crooked on this video. I hope you can uh, excuse the angle. Um, so earlier in the week, I was thinking like, I don't know, what's the purpose of it? Is, is it like a safety feature to augment me or am I existing to augment autopilot? Like I didn't really understand what the relationship was. It seemed really like digital to me earlier in the week. I guess I'm going to have to get off in a quarter mile when I'm going to disengage your uh, lane change and I'll have to get off in half a mile. Um, I didn't really understand what the relationship was at all. And I thought that it was a little dangerous at higher speeds to rely on a car to drive itself that I had to be prepared to jump in at a moment's notice if it disengaged. You know, there have been some well-publicized accidents with cars and autopilots. And the question is, like, was the driver paying attention, which you're supposed to, and by law you have to. Uh, is that reasonable? Like, in practice, are people really doing that? There's some complexities about the, the, gray, the gray zone. I guess I'm going to get off here. Um, or is it that you're driving and autopilot's just supposed to help you in an emergency? I don't really think that's the case. I mean, the car is not going to do active collision avoidance. But it's not going to take control and avoid some impending doom. So I had some real conflicts at, conflicts with it conceptually this week and how it worked and what the consequences would be if I let the car drive and wasn't paying attention, which is guaranteed going to happen in the world. I mean, we're in this weird phase where cars are starting to drive themselves, but they're not supposed to legally and you're not supposed to not pay attention. It's kind of a weird, weird zone, just like the angle of this video. Um, but I think... I think over the past two days, I've been coming to this weird conclusion that auto drive or autopilot, I should say autopilot, is essentially like a driver training car where theoretically you have two steering wheels, one for the, all right, camera, let's go back, one for the student driver and then one for the driving teacher, the driving instructor. And they also have brakes and gas, I guess. Let's imagine. I mean, I think when I was growing up, they only had brakes or whatever the deal was with the cars. But theoretically, this car has two steering wheels. It has two gas pedals and two brakes. One is physical and one is invisible, virtual, electronic, software-based, mechanical, whatever. And in the last two days, I have concluded that autopilot is not driving itself. And it's not me driving myself. There's no conflict. I've kind of resolved the fact that autopilot, the concept is that instead of having one driver responsible, you have two drivers. At no point while autopilot is engaged, is it ever just one thing driving? It could be, but it is not, and it should not be, and legally it isn't, that in fact you have two drivers, and the concept is that two drivers are better than one. And it was a little odd for me getting used to that because I wasn't sure in the beginning of the week when I had my hand on the wheel, like you have to have your hand kind of solidly in the 10 and 2 position with some pressure or it would sense that you're not there. Let's see if I'm making the right turns here. Or it would disengage or tell you to put your hands on. But 
now that I've kind of gotten used to the idea that I'm still actively driving, but at the same time, the car is actively driving as if I had a, a driver's instructor in the car. And I can, I mean, am I, am I driving the steering wheel changes or is the car, I think the car is still driving it, but I'm keeping up with it and we're both driving together. I don't know, is it like a duet? Are we both singing the same song together? Uh, by the way, I have a terrible voice. You're never gonna hear me sing. I would never sing on video. Uh, so maybe that's a bad analogy. But I think it's somewhat appropriate because when you're on autopilot, you're both driving. And the goal is to harmonize, I suppose. Again, I'm not good with music, so I'm probably making all the wrong musical analogies, but you both have to kind of sing together, sing in the same words and the same tune and tone and pitch and all the rest of it. And I've noticed when I do that, it works pretty well. Like there are no surprises. I'm still paying attention. I'm still driving, but I'm still allowing the car to drive at the same time. And that is the thing that has let me think that maybe, there's a car coming, come on, that maybe there is a purpose for autopilot in terms of safety as a co-driver, not as a replacement for me, because I actually love driving but as us driving together. So I don't know, I'd love to hear your comments on this um, down below. If there's some other case for autopilot and not self-driving, but just you know straight autopilot that I'm not aware of, or if you're all seeing scenarios that you've let the car just drive itself and you don't pay attention, I guess, um, and that works for you, then great, I'd love to know it. It's not really working for me because I'm not sure I feel safe if I just give over all control to the car and I'm not paying attention at all. Like the consequences of doing that at high speed and then having the car disengage and you having to take control at the last second, not particularly safe in my opinion, but I'm finding that co-driving and duetting behind the wheel um, is becoming more comfortable the more I do it. And I'm finding myself um, engaging autopilot almost as often as I can um, to allow that to happen. And if you watch my previous videos, you'll know that if you don't duet and sing properly with the Tesla, you're gonna get Tesla busted. I'm at Home Depot finally, there's like cars and carts and people and all sorts of craziness all around. If you don't duet properly together, come on, dude, let's go. There's like stacks of things and you know, fall over on my beautiful new car. If you don't do it together, you're going to get Tesla busted. And if you do it too often, you're going to get Tesla grounded and Tesla bans you from using autopilot during the rest of your trip if you're not driving well. So the moral of this video and the moral of this story, curbside pickup, is you better learn how to sing you better sing the song that Tesla wants you to sing. And it's actually a good song, I'm finding out. And if you work with the car and you drive with the car, it appears to me that there is a very significant added safety feature with autopilot that I didn't really understand at first, but I'm starting to conceptualize and I'm even starting to embrace. Let me know what you think. Pulling into my parking spot here with no cars around me so no one opens their doors and smashes my beautiful car or runs into me. Um, let me know what you think. Would love to hear from you. By the way, I wear sunglasses in all my videos. Um, turns out my eyes are kind of sensitive to too much light, but uh, I actually have eyes. They're real, they're right there. Um, hope you're having a great day. I'm gonna pick up my chamois and my little microcloth and non abrasive detergents and whatever else I can find inside Home Depot. Wish me well and we'll chat later.